I was brought up with dogs. All th there was, I was, our first dog, Nelson, was eight when I came on the scene. And it was only when George had to be put to sleep when he was 14 that the family home became bereft of dogs. I'd not long moved out of home and got married to James and my folks had decided, although not that old, looking at if you, the commitment that a dog is 10, maybe 15 years, would they still be able to look after the dog they needed, the way it needed in that time? And they decided, no, they couldn't. Now for me, a house isn't a home until there's a dog. And when James and I both worked in an office in Edinburgh, it just wasn't feasible having a dog. Because we were out at work, left the back of six in the morning, didn't get home until the back of five. It wouldn't have been fair in the dog, even if they got dog, we got dog walkers in. But one of the joys of being a minister is, I work from home, and not just in the times of COVID. But the thing is, dogs, as those of you who've either have dogs or have had dogs, are big commitments. Whether you take them on as a puppy or older, you've still got to train them. You, you've kind of also, they're learning you and you're learning them. When we were house training Sirius, so we'd only had him for maybe a fortnight and he twigged really quickly. There was one day where he just sat in front of us, staring cutely. And we're like, oh, that's cute. And then he went away and had a pee in the corner of the living room. And we're like, okay. And it was fine because he was just new to this. And then about a couple of hours later, he did this looking at us and staring again. And went and had another pee in another corner of the living room. And that's when we twigged him sitting and staring at us was a hint of, I really need to go. So it's a, it's a two-way thing. But we've got to plan back in normal times, whatever they were, you were planning ho holidays around making sure either we could take the dog with us or there was someone to look after the dog. If I had to go away for the whole day, James would pop back to check on Sirius and take him out. And it's a lifelong commitment from puppy to old age. I can't suddenly decide I can't be bothered anymore and get rid of them. Well, I could, but I'd be a bit of a pariah. And I'm not that keen on people that do that. Sometimes there's change of circumstances and that's different. But it's funny how you're probably quite comfortable, those of you that aren't particularly religious, or maybe even come to church every Sunday or watch this every day, me talking about dogs. I'm nodding in agreement about the commitment and how it's lifelong. Well, what about taking up your cross and following Christ? It is a lifelong commitment. It isn't just fair weather, as James was saying. It isn't just when we can get to church. When's the church reopening? The church never closed. This is church. It's not church like we've ever experienced. And if anything, at the moment, maybe this is us taking up our cross and following Christ, going into the world in being Christians rather than expecting the world to come on a Sunday. Because actually, with seating arrangements at two metres and face masks and no singing, I don't even really want to go into the building. I don't know about you. The lifelong commitment also means we're going to make mistakes. We are. In retrospect, there's things that when early on we serious, we didn't get right, but we corrected. Peter, last week we heard, declared Jesus the Messiah. And Jesus went, this is great. You've learned this through something that's come into your heart and anything that humans have told you. And on this rock of faith, I will build my church. And in that same scene that we hear today, when Jesus talks about his death and resurrection, Peter's like, oh no, that can't happen. He can go from being getting it so right to so wrong, almost in the same sentence. 
Yet that didn't mean that Jesus gave up on Peter. And it doesn't mean that Jesus, when we get things wrong, when we stumble, when we fall, when we can no longer carry that cross for us to carry, that Jesus will just give up on us. Or when we look to the worldly things, rather than the path that Christ is calling on us, he won't go, well, you're on your own now and abandon us like some people do with their dogs. No, he will still be there leading us, guiding us and sometimes probably putting on us in our lead because we're too busy sniffing that thing that we shouldn't be sniffing. Yeah, my dog analogy is going too far, isn't it? But the path of discipleship isn't easy. It isn't. If you think it's easy, then, and you've been, I've been your minister for a while, I actually feel quite ashamed that you've not caught on yet. And if you think it's all rose-tinted spectacles and when you become a Christian, the whole world is at your feet and everything's going to be okay, I hate to break it to you, but you're deluded as well. But the path is to take up the cross, that instrument and symbol of torture, and in taking it up, show the world that you are a Christian. And together we can work at this in the same way as my dog and I are a team. There's sometimes I learn from him and I will learn from you and you learn maybe sometimes from me. But to get, uh, sometimes I might need a help carrying my cross and you might need a hand carrying yours. And we can help one another with that. That's what the church is, as we walk and step out in faith, following where Christ leads. Amen. Let's come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, Holy One, eternal are your thoughts, and with reverence we give thanks this is so, for you see into our hearts and know our true intentions. Forgive us when we slip. We thank you for your ways, your path, your calling, not of the world, but of your kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. We thank you for your trust, which you showed for Peter and to us, to be the ones to lift up our crosses and follow you. Leading Christ, as you lead us, show us those who need your care and compassion, those who were shielding who are anxious being around others. Those who are still furloughed, increasingly concerned for their future. Those who have had medical treatment delayed, still in pain, physical and mental. Inspire us to practical action to support them and political action to speak out on their behalves overseeing one. Assist us to view the world from your point of view, looking beyond ourselves and our own local concerns. We pray for those affected by wildfires in California, the hurricane causing havoc in Louisiana, people of colour increasingly subjected to racism in this country and throughout the world. Farmers struggling to adapt to increasingly variable climate. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In a few moments, we pause to offer our prayers for the people, places and situation which are in our hearts this day.
Lord accept these prayers, spoken and unspoken, offered in faith through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and always. Amen.